supraspinalis. The supraspinalis muscle originates from the supraspinous fascia and attaches to the great tuberosity of the proximal humerus. It is responsible for the abduction of the shoulder joint and innervated by the suprascapular nerve. The supraspinalis infraspinalis and the teres minor tendon are sequentially attached to the great tuberosity of the humerus from the anterior to the posterior. The great tuberosity is composed of um, superior facet, middle facet, and inferior facet. The supraspinous tendon attached to the superior and the middle facet. The infraspinous tendon attached to the middle facet. And the teres minor tendon attached to the inferior facet. Among these, the posterior part of the supraspinous tendon and the anterior part of the infraspinous tendon are overlapping each other. The supraspinous tendon is attached deep. The infraspinous tendon is attached superficially. When examining the supraspinous tendon, there are three paced positions. Hyperextension position, middle tongue position, and cross position. Normally, supraspinous is tilted forward at about 30 degrees with respect to the transverse section of the thorax. In this position, the shoulder joint is only adducted and hyperextended, but not internally rotated. And the long axis test of the supraspinous tendon is performed by tilting the fervor at about 30 degrees with respect to the current plane of the shoulder joint. Short axis image can be obtained by the rotating the fervor inspect along the longitudinal axis by approximately 90 degrees. Middle term position. This is a position in which the palm of the affected side is placed on the iliac crest and the shoulder joint is adducted. The shoulder joint is adduction, extension, and mild internal rotation. Long axis image of the supraspinous tendon can be obtained by tilting the through 45 degrees relative to the coronal plane of the shoulder joint and the placing it under great tuberosity. In contrast, short axis image can be obtained by rotating the through 90 degrees. Cross position. This is a posture in which the shoulder joint is adducted and extended. The dose of the hand is placed on the back and the fingertip are pointed toward the inferior tip of the opposite scapula. By positioning the probe vertically below the acromioclavicular joint, a long axis image of the supraspinous tendon can be obtained and the short axis image can be obtained by rotating the probe 90 degrees. The angles suggested for each posture may vary from person to person depending on the retroversion of the humeral head and the muscle mass of the shoulder joint. To view the most accurate long axis image of the supraspinous tendon, place the probe along the long axis on the long head of the biceps brachii tendon. Then move the probe is parallel from the long axis of the biceps brachii tendon to the infraspinous tendon and the drew supraspinal tendon in between. Ultrasound examination method of the supraspinous tendon. When examining damage in the lesion of the supraspinous tendon, it is recommended to check with the sequential image for the more accurate evaluation. And if a lesion is suspected, check with the dynamic image. I recommend examining the transverse view of the supraspinous tendon and then perform the longitudinal examination. Short axis image showed whether the location of the injury is anterior, middle, or posterior. If there is a tail, what the size of the supraspinous tendon tail is, whether it is intra-articular and extra-articular, check whether the degree of the tail is a full thickness or partial thickness, and furthermore, whether it is articular side, intra-substance, or bursa side. Then, check the damaged area again along the long axis. The short axis test as you can for the supraspinous tendon is the first to perform in the hyperextension position, then in the middle term position, and finally in the cross position. 
The test sequences to first use the short joint in the hyperextension position to move the probe from the intraarticular area to the extraarticular area using a sliding tackling to examine the long head of biceps brachii and the anterior and the middle area of the supraspinous tendon. Then change shoulder joint to the midterm position and check the anterior, middle, and posterior part of the supraspinous tendon from the intraarticular to the extraarticular area. Lastly, in the cross position, the middle and the posterior part of the supraspinous tendon and the infraspinous tendon are examined by moving the fluid from the intraarticular to the extraarticular. After examining the supraspinous tendon using transverse view, image to determine to some extent whether there is abnormality in the supraspinous tendon. The longitudinal B image performed in the middle-term position from the long head tendon of the biceps brachii to the infraspinous spinalis tendon, excluding all part of the supraspinous tendon located in the middle. Cross position is not suitable for testing the long axis of the supraspinous tendon because the long head of the biceps brachii and the anterior aspect of the supraspinous tendon may not be visible due to the internal rotation. It is important to observe the long head of the biceps brachii tendon, which is a landmark. Dynamic examination of the supraspinous tendon, resisted the scaption examination. In both the cross and the middle term position, the supraspinous tendon muscles are not aligned in the low, so it is difficult to perform a dynamic test. However, in the hyperextension position, dynamic testing is possible because the supraspinous muscle and tendon are aligned in a low internal rotation. Scaption is an abbreviation for scapular flame elevation. When the shoulder joint is moved from the hyperextension position to scaption rather than abduction, the supraspinous muscle and tendon are folded in a straight direction. When resistance is applied, small partial tear of the supraspinous tendon can be observed. 